Hello again, Tom McGuire. I'm going to review The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks. Now this is, I have to say, if you don't watch the rest of this video, get it, listen to it, read it, whatever. Fantastic book. There's a couple of things in here that are an absolute game changer. They've been a game changer for me and I'm sure they will be for you as well. So if you want to find out about that, please carry on listening to the rest of this review. Please feel free to give me a like and a subscribe. I always appreciate that. Um, I'm still quite early on in this game of, of YouTube stuff and I want to try and improve what I'm doing all the time, get better at it and kind of reach more people. Follow me if you get a chance on Facebook and Instagram at Maguire Total Coaching, where I'm just passionate and obsessed with getting the best type of personal development advice out there to as many people as possible. I think we've always had a need for personal development, but I think it's even more needed nowadays. Um, it's really helped me. It's helped me in my personal life, in my business. Um, I'm now a one-to-one -one coach as well, so I do a lot of coaching with a lot of very successful people, also some much less successful people who might be struggling. So I've got a pretty broad range of experience um, and I'm just passionate to get a, the right type of personal development out there to as many people as possible. So please follow me on there as well. So this book, The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks, really, really good. He kind of asked the question to begin with, which I think is really interesting. Could you be happy all the time? Do you think you could be happy all the time throughout the day? Do you think that's even possible? Would, would you even want to be, particularly when you actually think about it? And in some ways, the obvious answer might be, well, of course, if I'm happy, then I'm fine, aren't I? But the point is, you can't really feel happiness unless you kind of understand the other side of that. And there's no kind of light without dark. There's no happiness without sadness. So we kind of have to have a bit of a balance. Um, and he basically sort of makes the point that there's no school really who that ever taught or school lesson that ever taught us how to cope with happiness, how to cope with success. And actually coping with success is, is massive. You, don't, you only have to look at lottery winners, these people who have had nothing and then they win millions of pounds or dollars. And then how many years later they're on drugs, they've spent everything, they've lost it all. People can't necessarily cope with huge levels of success and huge levels of money and, and obviously money and success aren't necessarily exactly the same thing but there's there are there are similarities there um and so we're not taught that we're basically just kind of told success is the goal do whatever you can to get there and, and that's it and generally we're told it'll be the natural you know the naturally gifted people who will get there and all you know you can't expect to be like them they've, they've got it you know you haven't necessarily no matter how hard you work well actually the truth is as you get older, you realise it's actually the amount of effort and work that you put in. If you're passionate enough about something and you're determined enough, then you have got a much better chance of succeeding than someone who just has natural talent. Because natural talent often just means that people aren't used to failure and then they struggle. Um, because no matter who you are, you're going to fail throughout life and you fail before you become successful. So it's about having a growth mindset, which we've talked about plenty of times before. So he talks about fear and anxiety being very closely related to excitement. And we've heard that before, haven't we, in lots of different books. So that feeling of anxiety and butterflies in your stomach before you stand on stage or you do something that you're scared of is very close to the feeling of excitement you used to get as a kid if you're going to go on like a big slide or a ride or, or whatever, whatever it is. And they're, they're really closely sort of related and linked. And he says that there are things we can do through breathing where we can kind of use that energy to focus more positively. If we're about to go on stage, we're feeling scared, we can take a deep breath, we can think the right things. And actually we can use that as a bit of adrenaline and energy to, to give a better performance and, you know, put more energy into it, basically. Um, so he talks about, and this is the key to this book, and this is the thing that, that has really made a difference to me and, and I know will make a difference to you as well, is this idea of having an upper limit mindset. I'd never heard of this before, um, but it really, it, for me, it completely makes sense. So it's this idea that we have this kind of inner thermostat that kind of keeps us where we've always been, if that makes sense. So we're used to kind of feeling a little bit anxious, maybe through the day, a bit unhappy at times, a bit angry, maybe happy at other times, but, you know, comf at a comfortable sort of level that we're used to, basically. So the idea is that when we become successful or we, we achieve some kind of happiness, we will do something subconsciously to kind of undermine that and bring ourselves back down to where we're comfortable, where we've, all, where we've always been. Because you get that inner voice, don't you, kind of saying to you, you know, don't expect it to last for too long. It's not going to it's not going to last forever. You know, don't get too comfortable. You'll be tempting fate, blah, blah, blah. That inner bastard voice that wants to bring you down, basically, your ego that's trying to protect you. Um, and so he talks about how we can train ourselves to increase that upper limit. So that actually when, when we do feel happy or successful, we can think about it, we can kind of meditate on it a little bit, be a bit mindful and kind of just appreciate it and enjoy it. Just enjoy the moment, just be there in the present, you know, try and 
dismiss or put those thoughts to the side that are trying to sort of bring you back down enjoy it for as long as possible and then return you know if you do return to normal fine you just carry on you don't put any pressure on yourself about it it's it's about practice like most of these things isn't it when it comes to personal development it's about practicing it and the more you're able to get yourself used to feeling that happiness that success and not kind of knocking yourself down for it and kind of saying oh no, no it's gonna it's gonna go the more you can practice that the more you are open to having more success and more happiness it's the same with gratitude if you're not grateful for what you've got and you're miserable with what you've got then you're not going to get anything else because there's just no room for you to have anything else you're negative you're resentful you're you're bitter there's no room to have any kind of improvement so it's the same kind of principle and it's really really interesting i found it works for me and yeah i'm going to continue trying to trying to use that one um he talks about when we're worrying we're often worrying about things that are outside of our control and we can just kind of ask ourselves we can just be mindful and just say is that something that i can control if it is then what can i do about it maybe sit down write a few things down think about it take a breath if it isn't something you can can control then like the stoics say just learn to let it go if something's outside of your control it's outside of your control it might be easy to say but in the moment it can be difficult but actually again it's practice it's the same with trying to become perfect before you do anything before you start anything or finish anything you're never going to be perfect because perfect doesn't exist and trying to chase that is just procrastination it just doesn't work so you just have to kind of learn to accept that and practice that um, and that can make a huge difference as well so he says that success lies in your zone of genius which i really like because that's really close to dr john d martini who talks about um being in line with your higher values so the idea that you're only going to be successful if you do things that are in line with the things that you consider to be important, basically. You know, if you don't really subconsciously believe that being fit and healthy is important, chances are you're never really going to achieve it. You might try to achieve it, but you're probably going to hate it and you're probably just going to go back to where you were before. You have to have that belief um, within you that something is important. It's one of your higher values for you to, for you to work towards. So... You're in a genius. He says you can discover that by just trying things and just kind of when you find yourself in, in flow, in a state of flow, when you're just doing something automatically and you're finding it easy and enjoyable and you're kind of losing yourself to it. That's probably something that is part of your inner genius. That's probably something that you're really good at, that you can really kind of capitalise on and make the most of. So he says also to remind yourself throughout the day that you are that you're working towards success you know you can have inner, inner mantras if you like i suppose just to remind yourself to remind your subconscious as well um and just learn to say no to things that's a big one in personal development and success you know the more things you say no to the more other things more important things you can say yes to um and he also talks about how quite often successful couples struggle in their relationship as well because I don't remember exactly what he says about that, but there is a, there is a statistic on there. And he's done a lot of writing as well around relationship advice. Him and his wife are supposed to be in this wonderful marriage and things, which kind of looks a bit sickening. But, you know, he's done he's done a lot of work around that. and It's very popular. Um, but he's really good. He's done some really good stuff. I definitely recommend checking him out. Uh, check him out on YouTube and stuff as well. Read this book, The Big Leap. It's fantastic. I actually listened to it on Audible. He's got a good voice for narrating it as well. Um but the upper limit thing is, is a game changer as far as I'm concerned. So if you've enjoyed this, if you've got anything out of it at all, please like. So yeah, like and subscribe. Um, follow me at Maguire Total Coaching. Show your support. I'm going to keep this content coming. I'm going to improve all the time, get better and better stuff out there. Um, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Cheers.